All three of you are being asked to leave the property right now. If you don't leave, we're going to issue you a, a warning, basically, that says you're violating the policies. Of what? Disrupting customers trying to use the pool. How are we, di how are we disrupting? So you'll be asked to leave, and if you don't leave, you'll be subject to arrest for trespass. So this is subject to arrest. Room. Correct. If there's a man. So the men are just shower room. able to enter any women's space that they choose. Depends on each individual situation. Wow. Is that the way you guys are trained in there? To Is that how you're... Currently, well, it just depends on the situation whether or not we create something. Well, we have to evaluate it based given what the law says. So, and the law says a man can be in the women's show if he feels like he's a man. Yeah. That's the way it seems these days. Yeah. To deny the embodied sex based differences of men and women that is sexism to deny that we have these physical differences that are meaningful that is sexism and and girls are now being raised in in what is i say rape culture where they are told that they are literally not allowed to say no i can tell you i i miss using the pool just so much it was a very necessary part of my life for my physical well-being but she says a, a man, man watch little girls undress if she actually witnessed that in a normal society, that is a criminal act. Katie Davis Court reporting for Rebel News, back here today with Miss Julie Jamon at the YMCA Mountain View Pool because our petition has reached 10,000 signatures. Now, you might know Julie from our last video. She was banned from the YMCA for hate and discrimination after she allegedly witnessed a trans staffer watch little girls undress in the women's changing room. After expressing concerns, they banned her from the property. So 10,000 of you, actually more than 10,000 of you, signed the petition, so we are here today to hand deliver it to the YMCA staff to get Julie back swimming. Look at this. This is new. This is because the old lady saw little girls taking off their swimsuits in front of a man in the women's shower room. The man was dressed in a bathing suit, a woman's bathing suit, and he was watching these little girls. I did what a, any stand-up human being would have done. I said, you have to get out of here, you can't be in here. And he was watching those little girls. No parent would ever, ever have allowed that to happen. But this is the consequence. How does it feel to have 10,000 signatures? Oh, so, well, I'm pretty sure that 10,000 signatures probably represents a million people. And I am a grateful person because this issue needs as much attention as all of us can give to it, it is essential. It is the core of our culture and our whole legal structure is the fact that we have males and females, men and women. I can tell you, I, I miss using the pool just so much. It was a very necessary part of my life for my physical well-being. Julie, Julie come back, go for it. Oh, did somebody, oh my gosh. Did somebody just slide that through the door? Aaron Hawkins? Yeah, that's, so they knew you were out there. With the trans sticker. Okay, so Katie Davis Court, Rebel News. I'm here with Julie Jamon, and this Port Townsend YMCA, they are not letting us in the property because today we received over 10,000 signatures for a petition to let Julie swim. And we are here to drop this petition off to the Port Towns and YMCA, but they will not let us in the building. They have shut the building off and they slid this, um, this business card for us to contact along with a transgender sticker. So Julie, what do you have to say about this? Well, this is a community pool. It belongs to the community of Port Townsend and it is leased by the city. Uh, and the pool is managed by the YMCA, but I, it's very strange that they can cut the community off from this asset because of some synthetic sex uh, concept that they have. I, I just don't get it. This pool was open a short while ago. A friend of mine just went swimming and now it's closed. That is really arbitrary. How can the community count on having exercise 
and fitness, if if the if the facility is randomly closed and open with no schedule, right? How do you? Do, that's how great management is that. I think that's a great question, and you know, I arrived a little bit before Julie, and we've been trying to call the Port Towns of YMCA for about a week now, trying to see when they're going to be back open because they keep running out of staff and they can't stay open. So today we tried again and I just came up to the door five minutes ago just to see if anyone was inside and they were. And when we came back, everything is blacked out, shut. They locked the doors. They're preventing us from getting in. They put a new sign. This was not here when we did the original report with Julie. It says media are not allowed inside the premises. So they are also banning media from the Port Towns and YMCA, and this is just to let Julie swim. Julie has been a swimmer here for over 30 years. She loves to swim, and over 10,000 signed the petition to let Julie swim again. So I think what we should do is leave this because they're obviously here. They will get it. And then we will also be emailing them PDF copies of the petition to make sure that they did receive it and don't just throw it away. And we're gonna see if they take this to heart and let Julie swim again. You know, um YMCA means Young Men's Christian Association. And this behavior indicates some kind of tremendous fear or uh, dysfunction uh, it, by a nonprofit Christian organization that has, is so different than anything we have ever experienced from this organization. It, it, it's just unreal what's going on. Um, so here we are, citizens wanting to swim, and they're, they, they created an action. One, this manager in here kicked me out of this pool because I saw a man in a woman's bathing suit watching little girls. And I, this is mental health week, and I was being aware and I, I went to the cops and said, I see this going yeah. on. And here's some more cops. Can you guys so, step away from the door so I can access, please? Sure. Oh, yeah. Thank Hi. You. Um, so what are you doing here? What's that? Well, why'd they call you? Uh, unwanted people here. Unwanted. Yeah. So we're unwanted. I'm just letting you know, officer. How are you doing today? Good. I'm Katie. I'm with Rebel just News. Just see I'm recording. I'll just be, I'll be back in just a second. That's okay. okay. I just want to let you know that we are here with a petition because... Julie Jamon has been swimming here for so long. I understand. <laughs> we want Julie to swim again. So 10,000 people signed this so, Can you give us it? Sign this petition. No, they don't, they don't want your To get Julie here. swimming again. Thank oh. you. Please don't let her in. Oh anymore. my gosh. Thank you. This is an Thank official you. Can you manager. Get out of the doorway, please? Thank you. I'll be right back. Wow. 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 This is how they run their business. What are your thoughts? I can't believe that a Christian organization would be people. Yeah, just... Young Men's Christian Association is oh, YMCA. So. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, and don't bother me. All right. I don't know what was happening to those little girls, but I saw somebody watching them as they pulled down their bathing suits. And I believe I did the right thing by both the law and morally. And instead, I am being persecuted for that. Uh, and the basis of that is that um, I was discriminating against um, a person who, who I later learned had has declared he has a synthetic sex and he feels like he's a woman. Okay. And, um, uh, and then all, I went over to All the three of you, sorry to interrupt. Um, sure, come on. All three of you are being asked to leave the property right now. If you don't leave, we're gonna issue you an, a warning basically that says you're violating the policies of what? Disrupting customers trying to use the pool. How are we How are we disrupting? So you'll be asked to leave, and if you don't leave, you'll be subject to arrest for trespass. So this is subject to arrest? Means, Correct. How do you usually receive reports of child abuse? Well, uh, a victim will come in and disclose that they've been abused. So it takes the little, it would have taken the little girls to come. Or but girls like are too young to consent. Else, to they are teacher, too young to consent to a, to a man touching them. They are below the age of consent. They can't consent to that. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't come and complain to you, that's already abuse. Yeah, it's going to be difficult to prove sexual gratification in that specific case. So, but, but why was he with them when they were naked? Is it easier to prove synthetic sex than it is child abuse? 
I'm not sure what you're referring to. It's well, when sex. people say they feel like another sex other than what uh, they as they were born, and in this instance, this man per presented as a man in a women's suit, is it easier for you to protect him than it is for you to protect the little girls? I don't think so. If he didn't pretend so he was a different identity, would he have been kicked out? If he wasn't pretending that he was a woman, would he have been kicked out? Why? I don't know the answer to that. If they had called, if the wife depends, called and said there's a man. It depends on the situation and what was going on. If there's a man. So a men are just shower room. able to enter any women's space that they choose. Depends on each individual situation. Wow. Is that the way you guys are trained in there? To, is that how you're currently? Well, it just depends on the situation, whether or not we create something. Well, we have to evaluate it given what the law says. So. And the law says a man can be in the women's show. If he feels like he's a man. Yeah, that's the way it seems these days. Yeah. But, but if the, little girls are in there being watched the by that person. the state legislature. Right. I'm sorry to interrupt. I gotta grab the paperwork I said I was gonna give to you if you want. Okay, uh, thanks. You're, you're, I'm not detaining you guys, so no. you're welcome to leave yeah, if you yeah. want. But, uh, We're not detaining. Uh, so what, here, would ha what would happen uh, if I'm we didn't leave? I'm paperwork and I'll be back if you wanna talk more. Okay. You're right back. So what this is, is just a uh, basically a written warning. Oh, you were issuing a warning. You didn't tell us that right there. Because yeah. we were about to leave. But you said, come talk over here. Did you entrap us? No, <laughs> you didn't no, no, tell no. us to leave here. You no, said, said, let's go over here and talk. Absolutely, and we talked. And then I said, I'll be right back. You're welcome to leave if you wish. I'm going to go get that paperwork. That's a what form. I said. You were going to show us a form. Correct. Yeah. It's basically a form that advises you. you you can't be on YMCA property for a period of seven days or you're subject to arrest for trespass. You know, it's so unfortunate because we're, we're teaching girls just the opposite of safeguarding. Girls should be taught they deserve boundaries around their body. They deserve privacy and dignity and, and safeguarding and the right of consent, the right to say no to boys in their spaces, regardless of whatever luxury identity claims those boys are making about themselves. And, and the fact of the matter is that th this is beyond the ridiculous at this point, because there are, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these claimed identities. You know, you go on Wikipedia and you look at a list of identities and there's arrow gender and maverick gender gender and cake gender and cat gender and demon gender and and demi boy and demi girl and trans mask and trans femme and there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds so on on what basis should spaces or sports be segregated by by identity spaces and sports are are segregated by bodies because bodies matter sex matters when it comes to safeguarding and and to deny the embodied sex based differences of men and women that is sexism. To deny that we have these physical differences that are meaningful, that is sexism. And, and girls are now being raised in, in what is, I say, rape culture, where they are told that they are literally not allowed to say no to men and boys entitlement to cross their boundaries. And if girls say no, they are being told they are the harassers. This is the epitome of gaslighting. It is the epitome of psychological abuse. It is the epitome of DARVO, which is to deny abuse and reverse victim and offender. All right, so today did not go as planned as you just watched what happened. So if you would like to continue to support Miss Julie Jamon, go to LetHerSwim.com. Let's get 20, 30, 50, 100,000 signatures for Miss Julie Jamon so she can come back and start swimming again. And if you enjoyed our coverage and would like to support Rebel News, please go to RebelNewsUSA.com. Subscribe and consider donating. We're crowdfunded by the people. We don't take a dime from the government, and we tell the other side of the story like what we did for Miss Julie Jamon. So thank you guys.